second to the second appointment of the uh, Arwa Archaeology in Action lectures on the Caucasus. Um, and uh, welcome everyone. And we, uh, we will start today, I would like to introduce briefly um, Georgi Bedianashvili. Um, and I will briefly show uh, is that okay? Um, uh, Georgi, I mean, I, I've known Georgi since uh, actually 2003. I mean, when he was still student at the University of Tbilisi and he was collaborating in excavations at Sajoge with Micho Abramishvili and uh, Winfried Ortman. His thesis at that time was on the Middle Bronze Age ceramics and decorative techniques <coughs> of, the, of, the, uh, of the Middle Bronze. And he moved uh, later on, on the, uh, to, to, to France uh, for his PhD uh, thesis that he uh, discussed at the Ecole Pratique uh, des Autitudes de Paris. Uh, a thesis that was focused on the uh, Coban necropolis and on the on the late Bronze and early Iron Age in the in the Caucasus, especially working on the materials that were excavated uh, by by Chant, Ernest Chant, who was actually one of the of the pioneers of the uh, Caucasian uh, archaeology, working in this region in 19th century, and namely at yeah, the at the Koban uh, uh, necropolis in, uh, in, in, in modern uh, North, Northern Ossetia. After his, uh, after his PhD, uh, Georgi moved to Australia, uh, where he started uh, working uh, with our uh, close and unfortunately late uh, colleague, uh, Tony, Tony Sagona. Uh, with Tony Sagona, uh, Georgi excavated at the very beginning the, the Kuraraxe settlement of Chobareti. And uh, during the last years, uh, he's actually uh, co-director of the Gaia project, which means the Georgian Australian investigations in archaeology with Claudia Sagona and Andrew Jameson. And they are actually working at the settlement of Rabati which is a settlement dating uh, to, the, to the third, to the fourth and third millennium, where they are actually uh, bringing to light not only a Kuraraxis occupation, but even more interesting, uh, a, a post, uh, a, a, a rare, a very rare post Kuraraxis occupation dating uh, related to the so-called Bedeni cultural horizon. Um, with today's lecture, uh, we actually move from the Neolithic communities of the Mill Plain that were presented uh, by Andrea Ricci uh, during his, the last uh, lecture, and we move to, to other types of communities that occupied the region of the southern and northern Caucasus during the second uh, half of the second millennium and the uh, very beginning of the first millennium. I would like to, 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 to terminate, to finish this introduction by, by introducing uh, with, with, with very few words uh, taken from Tony Sagona's book, uh, what happens in, the, in, in this period in terms of um, of settlement patterns uh, that uh, radically changed uh, in comparison to what we see in the Middle Bronze Age. Uh, what Sagona says, there's a remnants of villages increase in numbers and then remains were now more visible uh, on the landscape and why hamlets were scattered across the plains. Uh, new, a new type of landscape was actually built in the South Caucasus and uh, a, a, a landscape made of stone architecture uh, and namely uh, um, constructed in order to, uh, to, to 
to, to build uh, often very imposing fortresses that actually uh, mark uh, and uh, the, the, the landscape of this period uh, throughout uh, the South Caucasus. And I don't really know very much about North Caucasus, probably uh, Georgi will tell us more, and, and surely Sabine too. Um, as concerns the uh, burial customs, I, I will leave uh, to Georgi uh, the, the task to introduce them and to, and to, and to, and to start uh, this lecture. But before, I would like to, uh, today, I, I, for the moment I'm, I'm here, I'm, uh, Sabine Reinhold is actually in the field uh, working uh, nearby Mycop, excavating a settlement nearby Mycop, but uh, we she's actually uh, in the car moving from the excavation to the museum, and hopefully she will join us uh, at the end uh, of the um, conference uh, for the uh, answers and question session. I uh, give now the floor uh, to Georgi, and uh, and I and we will uh, we will discuss uh, later uh, for uh, for the final. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Georgi. Bye. Uh, Thank you very much, Julia, for, for this introdu introduction. Um, and thank you very much also for, for giving me opportunities to, 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 to give a presentation here. It's, it's, it's a big honor for me. Uh, so, so today's uh, uh, presentation uh, talk is on the late ones, is on the deliberate destruction of, uh, of, of metal artifacts uh, in bronze early Iron Age South Caucasus. Uh, this, uh, the, the idea of this topic came uh, to me when I was doing my PhD, as we said, on the, on the Coburn necropolis located in uh, North Caucasus. So uh, while, while researching, I, I, I came across a number of artifacts, uh, bronze and iron artifacts, that has a quite deliberate, uh, 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 del that were deliberately distracted and damaged, uh, uh, like fragmented, uh, bench or, or, or just presented as a single fragment. So when I went into the details of, of, of this you know, topic, I, I found out that there is no, no research conducted on, the, on this topic in, in general in the South Caucasus, I mean, like systematic research, uh, as opposed to other parts of the world, uh, for, from, from Europe to, to Central America, where, where there's enormous, enormous research on this topic. I'm not, going, I'm not going to give a, uh, a literature review here, uh, literature review here, but, but just uh, briefly, just remind you some 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 uh, interpretations of, of of this deliberate destruction of of uh, metal artifacts. Um, so mostly, most, mostly it's a, it's protection from looters or, or or just for recycling. It is also considered that fragmented objects uh, that had uh, uh, same weight had pre-monetary use, uh, ritual interpretation of deliberate damage of uh, artifacts explained as, as, as it is taken out of sacrifi uh, sacrifi uh, sacrificial object from human use before giving it supernatural. And also the act of destruction of swords or dagger is connected to symbolic killing of, of its owner or it is believed it, uh, it, believed it represents the individual, the warrior. Uh, breaking uh, is also associated with physical uh, transformation of object. It is believed that the, the piece missing from artifact was removed on purpose in order to reuse it for making a new object. So, uh, despite of uh, despite of all this uh, interpretation, um, it, it should be said that the, the action of deliberate destruction of uh, destruction present one of the interesting elements to understand the social co uh, culture. Uh, uh, action of deliberate destruction uh, uh, aspect of ancient society. So as, as uh, Soren Hansen, uh, um, who in, uh, interpreting uh, uh, fragmented artifacts uh, as a votive, uh, working based on the European 
material notes uh, notes that uh, the fragmentation of object for the use of votive offering was a cultural innovation which also approached with a new way of thinking whose social background and whose social consequences still needs to be determined. So, uh, uh, so uh, as the materials that I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to present here is uh, mostly comes from the, comes from the uh, burials and hearts uh, that are found in, in the territory of Georgia. Um, um, so I was at first I was a little bit hesitant to 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 study those two uh, two contexts as the the, the position of, of of artifact in in hordes and in in burials uh, differ as um, uh, differs and, and like um, uh, is it believed that the various objects found in the hordes represent a group of a group of people so Nietzsche calls them a community deposit and contrast them with the grave contents, uh, which reflect the social character of a single person. But at the same time, it is uh, interesting to see that the, uh, see the, what is the difference between the deliberate destruction of artifacts in hearts and, and burials. This type of comparison might give us a clue to understand generally the meaning of this destruction act, uh, action. So today I'm going to uh, make an overview of deliberate destruction of bronze artifacts in the territory of Georgia. I will discuss those those come from burials and hordes separately, and then uh, these characteristics are uh, compared to each other. I'll examine the distribution of different pattern of deliberate destruction of artifacts through time and space. And at the end, uh, as a concluding remark, I'll, I'll try to interpret the meaning of this uh, action. But before, uh, before uh, uh, just let me briefly speak about the history of, of, of research of deliberate destruction of objects and some problems related to it. Uh, in Georgia, sorry, yeah, just for, for God, yeah. So this is what, I, what, we, what I'm going to go through. And now, yeah, just briefly history of the deliberate destruction of art uh, objects in Georgia and some problems related to, to it. Yeah. Although there is uh, no systematic research conducted on the deliberate destruction of metal artifacts in Georgia, certain ideas expressed toward the broken artifacts found in hordes and graves across the territory of Georgia has mostly pragmatic explanation um uh, they were uh, they are considered as a result of accidental damage or scrap for later usage as for the obvious bent objects such as metal dagger or spare head mostly found in graves it is connected with making it less attractive to workers uh, exception is a study on hoard in the territory of georgia by otarlotki panizek who proposed that the fragment fragmented metal materials found in hoard should be a sacrifice to dietary of metallurgy Apart from the metal artifact, one of the few uh, cases when damaged artifacts are represent, uh, interpreted as a ritual uh, act can be observed in, as early as in, uh, in, in early Bronze Age, the Chobayati settlement uh, that belongs to Purax culture. The site, some uh, grinding stones found together with complete ceramic vessels are fragmented. And this led uh, the author of excavation, Antonio Sagona, to explain its possible intentional uh, ritual, uh, uh, ritual act. In much, in much uh, later period in Western Georgia at one in Nukolakeri settlements dated to the uh, 8th, 7th century BC, a, a, cultic, place uh, a, a cultic place deliberately, fr uh, deliberate fragmentation of hundreds of zoomorphic clay figurines were also documented. You can see on the, on the slide the, the photo of these uh, zoomorphic uh, clay figurines. Um, so generally it should be said that it is difficult to, uh, to uh, always to, to, uh, to detect which of them are deliberately uh, uh, distracted or broken accidentally. Some of them might be a result of uh, a burial uh, collapse or corrosion of broken while excavating. In, in a horse case in Georgia, almost all of them were, were found by chance and it can be supposed that some of them were damaged at the moment of discovery, for example, by construction work. Sometimes in the first half of this, the last century, uh, in, in, in order to analyze composition of metal, uh, metal pieces were broken off that distorted shape. You can see the the uh, the, the photo of those photo, uh, of those objects. They 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 are results of destruction. Uh, they are not results of deliberate dis destruction prior to the, the deposition. They are the results of destruction in museums and laboratories to analyze them. And it was mostly happening in in the nineteen fifties and sixties. 
often, uh, often intentional disordered artifacts coming from excavation were subject of restoration. In, 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 in restoration, in, in those cases, history of, of these objects were erased and they were becoming completely new ones. One, one of such examples uh, can be seen on the, on, the day, on the bronze dagger from village Brilli in, in Kashuri district in central Georgia. In early publication, it had clear rectangular cut, uh, shape cut. However, now we can see that this dagger is restored and, and the, the, the cut was, was filled. Now it is very difficult to detect if, if the dagger ever had an uh, had a, had a intentional uh, damage. So now let me, uh, let, me, let me go back to our material and start with those coming from uh, burials. Sorry. So, but speaking about the burials, it should be said that the generally in the Caucasus region, the earliest evidence of, uh, of deliberate destruction of metal artifacts in burials can be seen, uh, is, is found in, in, in Novoslobodna, uh, Kurgan 31, uh, um, that is assigned to the fourth millennium BC. The burial complex this world has U shaped bands, as you can see. But, but uh, in the modern territory of Georgia, uh, uh, the earliest evidence of deliberate destruction of bronze artifacts can be seen in the Middle Bronze Age, in the second millennium BC. In the South Caucasus, this is a period of Trialetic culture. Uh, it is characterized uh, with a uh, hierarchical society, large, uh, with large individual barrels, with, with the abundance of rich, uh, gra uh, rich grave good, which was the reflection of the social power of the people buried there. In this triology culture barrels, they are found in four damaged rapiers. Let's go. Uh, uh, rapiers, long sword for uh, thrusting, and one and one is prototype. All of them have different traces of destruction. Here I'm going to show uh, show you show you two of them. One from Lilo Kulgan, uh, located near Tbilisi. It has a single break that is very even and doesn't show any evidence of pressuring or Prosecution. This break was probably made by hot shorting. A, a, a rapier from some tower of Kurgan is bent toward, uh, toward its lower part and has notches on its blade. Here I would like to uh, thank Mikhail Abramishvili for pointing to this uh, destruction. Uh, the occurrence of rapiers in these uh, burials is generally the first appearance of swords in the South Caucasus. As Abramishvili, who conducted the research on these uh, rapiers, note the appearance of rapier, uh, rapiers indicates uh, to the formation of elite warrior, warriors in, in this region. Uh, it should be supposed that in these uh, bur uh, burials, swords, compared to other rich grave goods such as personal adornments or vessels, had a special function. It wasn't only a symbol of elite warriors and social status, but most importantly, it was associated with personality and with the name of owner. It is believed uh, that such an important belonging of the per uh, person uh, uh, prior to its deposition in burials was, was damaged with the intention so that no one else would use it again. But at the same time, it, it should be also considered that the in intention of the uh, breakage or isn't on the end of the li life of object, like the death of the person or during the burial rite, cremation and fragmentation of bo uh, body is uh, uh, of body of disease is supposed to represent the process of transformation from one word to another. The same can be attributed to the destruction of sword. Therefore, it, sh it should be proposed that the, the physical uh, my physical uh, uh, damage of rapiers had intention to symbolize the earthly physical death of the owner and after this life in the same manner uh, to continue accompanying the owner in the other world. In reality culture, similar significance of sword had uh, daggers. Uh, like rapiers, they also uh, sometimes are found distracted. Narekwawi, Burial 28, uh, the bronze dagger blade is fragmented into several pieces and along the edge, uh, um, edge some part is missing. Uh, at Trilogy Kugan uh, 17, the silver dagger has notches along the edge and toward the lower part is broken. Similar destruction has the bronze da dagger from Trilogy Kugan 15. In Kugan, in Kugan uh, 19, a fragment of the dagger is found, uh, it's found it's, its peg and lower part is missing. Similar find of dagger fragment can be also observing Triology Kulgan 36. Uh, General, the occurrence of fragment of daggers 
of swording in the burials is not as prevalent as damaging. It becomes more popular in hearts, which we'll uh, discuss uh, with more details below. Uh, so it is difficult to say from where the deliberate destruction uh, in, in, in triology culture, I mean, uh, uh, of sword, for swords and uh, daggers uh, comes from in South Caucasus. The Middle Bronze Age in the region is a period of active interactions with outer world. The ev evid evidence of this area, uh, are evidence of this are various items of metalworking from, from the South Caucasus um, burials that find affinity with those from Anatolia, Mesopotamia, or Aegean War. As for the rapier, they find parallels in Levant and with Aegean, uh, with Aegean, with A type sword. So Mikhail Abramishvili proposed that South Caucasian rapiers predate as a, a, a type sword that they should have been originated from the South Caucasus or Anatolia. Based on this proposition, it should be pro supposed that the ritual breakage, breakage of, 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 of swords should, be, should, uh, should have been developed locally as well. This tradition in the South Caucasus should be, uh, 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 should, should be connected with the emergence of Kurgan burials, of burial rites, the accusation of society and appearance of elite warriors. So um, from the uh, from the uh, from the uh, 15th century BC in the South Caucasus region, triology culture is replaced by different material culture known as uh, with different name, but it's it's used the uh, Chashen Tipi or Gorebi culture uh, name culture here. This period is marked with the social cultural changes. Kurgan funeral custom with rich grave goods, including rapiers, are disappearing. They are replaced by more standardized burials with no more or less homogeneous grave goods. Despite of these changes, ritual breakage of weapons in burials still remains. This can be explained by the strong warrior culture societies that still remained in sub subsequent late Bronze Age. Although in this period, rapiers are disappearing in the uh, burial rites, there is an abundance of various types of other types uh, of, of weapons, such as slashing sword, daggers, spearheads and axes. This suggests that the, the late Bronze Age in the South Caucasus is a period of intense conflicts. But subsequently, it should be supposed that rituals related to the war culture continues practicing. Moreover, in this period, its scale and meaning become uh, becoming much wider. In the late Bronze Age, in the, in the burials, the subject of destruction is not only a sword or dagger, but also spearhead and axe which in this period are important attribution of the warrior. So in Trashin Tsitelogorebi culture, evidence of deliberate destruction of bronze weapons can be found at Perik Debi burial. There is a bronze dagger bent and broken into three pieces. Apart from it, there is a, uh, also a small size smashed bronze dagger. Another similar destruction of dagger can be found in South Georgia at Ibganchai burial number five. There is a long uh, bronze dagger's handle is broken off. As the, uh, the author of excavation, Kaka Kakiani, uh, notes uh, that uh, that dagger was found in a secure context without, and it wasn't robbed. Mm. So, um, uh, slightly later than the Berikdebi and Irgan Chai burial, burial complexes, around uh, 14th century uh, BC, is the Peshtasheni burial, number 13, located in the uh, South Georgia. Among the grave goods of this burial, there is a bronze dagger with U-shaped uh, U-shaped band. This is probably the earliest evidence of this type of bending uh, of a of a weapon on the territory of Georgia, which, as we will see below, is in later period becomes uh, much more popular. So, uh, more wider, uh, more. More wider occurrence of deliberate destruction of artifacts in burials can be found in later phase of late Bronze Age, around the uh, around the second millennium, uh, mid of second uh, end of end of the second millennium B in BC. Here, I will say a few words that what's uh, uh, what's happening. Just to remind you briefly what's happening in this period on the territory of Georgia. This is a period when on the ter territory of Jashen Tsitelagorebi culture in the eastern Georgia. In Kahet region, they are appearing uh, Uralaz Uralazani culture, and in central Georgia, uh, uh, in Kaku region, some power culture. In western Georgia, in this period, there is a Colchian culture that has different uh, culture background than the Baal Meshan or Jashan Tsitel Gorebi culture. 
supply chain culture has completely different um, uh, has completely different uh, bronze metal working uh, tradition and burial custom than Samkara and Yeralazan culture. During this period, in burial, deliberate destruction, uh, the destructed bronze artifacts are localized only on, uh, on the territory of Samkara culture and should attack the end in Sansa Jalaketi region. Yeah, here, is, here you can see the location of Sansa Jalaketi and Shidakati regions. Um, there is also clear evidence of this. Uh, uh, there is no clear evidence of this in, in Colchian burials, nor in Eastern Georgia in, in Tacheti region. So, uh, probably in this period, probably one of the one of the interesting sites where we can see, observe the deliberate destruction of uh, bronze artifacts is Natsargora, located in Shidakati region. Um, but before that, let me let me uh, say that it should be outlined that some taro culture has a distinct material culture and culture and culture during the early Iron Age in, in, in Shidakarti and some uh, some Sir region. There is, it can be found uh, just sorry uh, can be found uh, uh, the, can be found culture and uh, culture elements coexist with local material culture. Such example can be seen in burials and hall. This evidence is explained by some special as an ethnic infiltration from Western Georgia into central part of the Georgia, or as an assimilation of two groups from Western and central Georgia. It also uh, sought to be a place of in infiltration of zone, zone of mil uh, mingling between uh, the Western and central uh, Georgian culture. It should be mentioned that the, from the end of the second millennium BC, from, both from Colchian and Samkara culture, swords are not typical anymore. Leading rippers are daggers. Axis and spearhead. All of them are mostly dated to the uh, uh, 8th, 7th century BC. So uh, now let, let me go back to the uh, Natsargora settlement. So, one of the interesting sites in Shidakarti region in this period is Natsargora settlement, located in Shidakarti region, dated from 12th to 7th century BC. Here, mostly spearheads and daggers are uh, destructed, probably only rectangular bed buckle that are found together with damaged spearheads and daggers are broken into several pieces. Like weapons, uh, distra destruction of this belt buckle with uh, which like weapons were part of the warrior's accoutrement can be considered uh, deliberate. Other artifacts in, in, in the barrels are intact. As for the daggers and spearhead at Natsagora, uh, one of the popular pattern of uh, deliberate destruction is breaking into a half. Rectangular cut, uh, cut on the uh, blade uh, we will see this pattern at the uh, at other side as well. Uh, has also is also a quite popular pattern of destruction. U-shaped bands uh, also another popular pattern. At Natsagora, uh, that both uh, both bronze and iron diggers and spare hands have, uh, has this U-shaped bands. It should be said that that by the seventh fifth century. Uh, we see this type of damage, damage becomes highly characteristic of the mountainous region uh, northwest from Natsagora, uh, where at the cemetery like uh, Bazaleti and Varsimatgari, iron sword often exhibit U shaped bending. Uh, as for the uh, rectangular cuts, uh, here's a, uh, you can see Varsimatgari and uh, Bazaleti uh, uh, location of those. Uh, uh, Settlement and this one of the examples of uh, U-shaped uh, bending. Yeah. Uh, so um, as for the rectangular cut nearby, uh, a nearby uh, area of Natsargora, a nearby area of Natsargora can be found uh, in Me Megrekisi uh, burial number six, where bronze dagger blade has a rectangular uh, shape cut on. on, on out of its edge. This type of break, uh, breakage appears to be specific to the Shidakarti region at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh, second second uh, and beginning of the first millennium BC. Similar destruction patterns on spearheads uh, we have at some Tower uh, cemetery uh, located north of Tbilisi. Apart from this pattern at some Tower there uh, there also can be found artifacts that are bent or fragmented. Yeah, you can see some material from Samkara Cemetery. 
Um, a different pattern of uh, below the destruction of artifacts in burials can be found at, at Bornigale and Chikakevi and Kvidat uh, cemeteries located close, uh, located clo uh, together in the Bojomi region and uh, dated to the 8th, 6th century BC. With, uh, with their distinctive burial rites, these uh, cemeteries stand apart from other cemeteries uh, in the region. Post cremation and cremation burials have been excavated there, as well as mixed burials. Cremation is characteristic for the Colchian culture of Western Georgia in, in the early Bronze Age, but, uh, but is almost unknown for the Central uh, Georgian Samparo culture. But putting crem uh, cremated human parts in a ceramic vessel well, so together with, with, with grave goods, as is, as is seen uh, at, at uh, Chita Heavy, Bornigeli, and Kvilatskoveli, is not typical for either culture. The most uh, frequently found damaged artifacts at Chita Heavy, Bornigeli, and Kvilatskoveli is the spearhead. In, in, in some burials, there are several. Uh, uh, in, uh, in almost all, crem uh, all cremation burials, bent or fragmented bron uh, bronze and iron spearheads are found in vessels along with the cre cremated human remains. The second most common uh, damage artifact is in the burials is uh, daggers, like the spearheads, they are bent and placed in vessels. A chitakevi, a damaged axe with a broken socket, was also found, and at Bonigelle, a, frag a fragment of an axe blade had been place in crem cremation urn. Damaged iron sword have also been found, all folded and placed in cremation vessels together with spare hands and da daggers. For example, a broken a bronze spare hand and a folded iron sword with a bronze handle you know, was placed inside, inside the cremation vessel in Bornigale Grave 8. It has been suggested that the reason for folding this sword was, was to fit uh, them into the vessel. Uh, but in Born in Valley Grave 8, a damaged dagger, uh, dagger was left laying alongside the vessel in the barrel pit. A Chitah Heavy and Born in Valley bench spare hands and uh, daggers have also been found, uh, found placed next to the skeletons in, in, in information burials. Other examples can be found in, in the early age Aegean world, where similar deformed, uh, you can see, uh, uh, where similar deformed iron swords in cremation burials were never place inside vessels. This evidence suggests that people from the Borjomi region practice ritual breaking of weapons, where, whereby swords were folded not, not only with the um, practical intention of placing them into the vessel, but also because the act of intentionally damaging them, uh, them had ritual meaning. So uh, as the evidence is shown on the modern age of Georgia, despite of cultural changes and the shift in burial practice, uh, deliberate destruction of weapons, sword, dagger, spear hands, and, uh, uh, and axe as a part of the burial rite was practiced almost constantly from the Middle Bronze Age to the end of the Iron Age, although uh, early Iron Age, although it is, it is, it, it is, uh, it is typical uh, of burials across the uh, modern territory of Georgia, it still can be, uh, it, is, it, it is not, uh, it's, uh, this is type of uh, uh, deliberate destruction can, is, is quite popular practice associated with warrior society. The practice is, uh, this practice is uh, mostly concentrating in the central part of Georgia where it appears only at some sites and locations. So uh, let me now uh, start with the hordes. The earliest hordes on the territory of Georgia is dated to the first half of the third millennium BC and comes from Western Georgia, it's Sarkasria and Zemo Imereti. Those sites were recently examined by uh, Jonia Pakidze and Swen Hansen. Uh, generally, hordes are mostly typical for the Colchian culture in Western Georgia. However, uh, as it was mentioned above, it is also appearing in the central part of Georgia, in the culture region, where Colchian and Santaro Machilos culture coexist. Often, hordes represent a number of objects placed in uh, ceramic or bronze vessels and burials in the ground. In hordes, there can be found almost all categories of metal artifacts, personal adornments, weapons, agricultural tools, and ingots. Some of, the, uh, some of these artifacts are less frequented, and some of them are almost inseparable of hoard content, such as, for example, uh, eggs or mattocks. In hordes, there are certain type of uh, bronze objects that, differently from uh, burial, do not uh, appear at all. Such objects are mattocks, segments, sickles, uh, and ingots. Apart from the contra, uh, uh, 
apart from the contrast of content of artifact between the burial and the hoard, the pattern of intentional destruction of artifact differ as well, and we'll see it now. But, uh, but the earliest evidence of deliberate destructive artifact in the hoards are, uh, are those from Zemus uh, Sassileti located in the central part of Georgia. It is attributed to Jashin Zikel Gorabi culture and dated to the second half of the second millennium BC. In this hoard, there are found dagger, uh, daggers with, uh, which, uh, which have a different pattern of uh, destruction. They are broken in, uh, into fragments. One lower part of the blade is bent. Apart from the dagger, in this hoard, there, there, there is also a, uh, a bronze tripod a vessel with a lead, orna or a lead, uh, lead ornamented with bird figurine. This probably ritual vessel has a quite clear uh, has a quite clear evidence of smashing as it is broken into the central part. We can exclude that it uh, that it was accidentally damaged as as it, the, the, this object looks quite solid it's, and just in the middle it has this um, quite clear breakage. Generally, the occurrence of that, uh, uh, the probably where the vessel has quite clear evidence of uh, smashing as it is broken in the central part. Generally, the occurrence of daggers in the hordes is not very common in both in Western and central part of Georgia. Uh, here, uh, here, eight hordes that contain bronze dagger and almost in all of them are damaged or presented only with the fragments. With regard uh, to hoarding cultures, it is interesting to know that one of the characteristic dagger type of Colchian culture that appears with large number in barrels, uh, none of them is deposited in hoards. Those daggers or swords that appear uh, in Colchian hoards are completely unknown for local culture or less characteristic. One of such examples is Semo Simonetti hoard, uh, where among the Colchian methods, there is a so-called Kedabek type sword broken into fragments. This is typical for the Eastern Georgian Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan. This evidence to a certain extent recalls the explanation of damaged artifacts in, in European horde based on this uh, theory, weapons that were taken from defeated enemies were damaged and sacrificed to, di uh, to dietaries. By doing this, they were killing the personality uh, of, of their enemy that their sword or daggers were symbolizing. Um, in, in favor of this uh, suppo uh, supposition, another interesting material, uh, material is Afakalak Hort, Hort, located in central Georgia. In this port, so there are 11 Eastern Georgian type of axes and four Colchian type. I like to Eastern, uh, Eastern Georgian ones, Colchian axes are presented in fragments, which lead to the assumption that these axes left undamaged might be associated to, to identity of owners and broken, uh, broken ones belong to others. In the same context, uh, another interesting example is uh, Tomofi Hort, located in the northern part of Colchis in Raja. Uh, their socket eggs, and typical of the South Caucasus, is damaged as opposed to other objects in the Hort. Although these evidences, it should be said that in Colchian Hort, often local type of eggs are damaged too. These axes are mostly damaged around the socket hole and, uh, and in some cases, blade is broken off. It should be supposed that the damaging of socket hole was made purposefully in order to make it unusable. To this similar conclusion came Tarnan in uh, 1998, who examined damaged axes uh, from uh, Essex and Kent. Similarly, similarly to Georgian ones, axes from England were often damaged around the socket hole. And compared to other weapons, spearheads in, 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 in hordes appear quite rarely. Uh, there, are, uh, there are known uh, three, three hordes that contain this weapon. In all of them, they are found damaged. Only in Ruhuano horde located in, 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 in Svaneti, in, uh, among three spearheads, one is destructed. Its point is broken uh, and the socket is damaged. Apart from weapons, uh, in horde, there are other objects that are also intentional damage. Those are mattocks, segments. Um, yeah, I should uh, specify when I'm saying segments. So in, in among Georgian archaeologists, uh, the, the, this is the anchor shape uh, bronze, uh, bronze object. 
the, 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 the meaning of the, uh, the function of this object is still unknown, it's, it's open to debate. Uh, some, some scholars consider it as, as an agricultural tool and it's, and it's called as a, as a segment. So those are matchups, segments, bill hooks, and sickles. Compared to weapons, these, uh, these agricultural tools are much less damaged. Among these objects, the most often sickle is damaged. Uh, um, other uh, metal objects such as ingots, personal adornments, figurines, and vessels is sometimes uh, damaged as well. However, the frequency of their breakage doesn't give substance to propose that this group of artifacts were a particular target of intentional destruction. The votive character of this thought artifact in Horte Positionary World uh, demonstrates Gambinistalo uh, Hort, located in Shudakarti region. This Hort is distinguished by, by the complete bronze object where there are the peaked figurines of, uh, of goat, dog, and human, uh, hum humans, and pen. It is believed that this, this object represented the totem of, 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 sheep, uh, of, of sheep and uh, uh, fertility. Apart from, from it, in the, the hoard, there, there were also found fra fra fragments of bronze daggers, blades, swords, broken uh, vessels, then da uh, damaged axes. You can see all this material. No segment arrowheads, fragments of heel hook, bracelets, belt buckles. It is difficult to imagine that all these objects, together with completely green, that doesn't have any analog in region, belong to this type of and were intended for the, the smelting. Uh, then it should be supposed that uh, these damaged artifacts were the sacrifice to the dietary to what the figurine repre represents. It is, uh, it, is, uh, it is also considered that the, the position of fragments in horror represent this scrap of bronze artifact is intended to be ret retrieved and resmelt. One of the good examples that oppose this proposition is probably uh, Urbrinsi Inhumation Burial 25, located in, again in Shidakarta region. Uh, there, among other grave goods, in a ceramic vessels were placed broken uh, bronze spearhead and fragments of ingots and segments. Putting ceramic vessel full of, of scrap in the burial, in the similar way as part the position, suggests that the broken artifacts in the hearts who had ritual character and was not intended for later uh, later retrieval. So, uh, and, and generally, the presence of fragments of bronze is more prevalent in hoard than in burials. Uh, so one of the main arguments that su uh, support the in in intentional destruction of artifacts in hoards is its regularity and selectiveness. It was, um, it was observed that uh, uh, hoard deposition almost always, uh, uh, always like, uh, this destructive, like daggers and sword, as well as spare hands are broken in fragments. Sickles are too often subject of destruction. This parallels with those hoard deposition found in Central and Eastern Europe, where above mentioned artifacts are often distorted more often than others. So, um, as a conclusion, so uh, the overview of intentional damage artifacts and burials and, and hoard suggests that its origin in the South Caucasus uh, is associated with the emergence of warrior hierarchy. If intentional in the, in the Middle Bronze Age, the object of destruction were only reappears later in the Late Bronze, early Iron Age, there is a wider range of artifacts that are intentionally de uh, destructed. Along alongside swords, daggers, and spearheads can be seen. This the, uh, the, uh, this uh, can, can be uh, to this list can be added axes and personal adornments that rarely but sometimes reveal evidence of intentional damage. All these objects represent the personal identity of the people in the burials. Destruction of these artifacts that were once themselves uh, tools of destruction and killing mirror the warrior warrior ideology of this epoch in the South Caucasus region. In Georgia, almost all the all the deliberately destructive uh, destruction of artifacts uh, in, in burials occurs only in the central part of, uh, of the region within the area. However, different patterns of deliberate destruction can be seen that are locating a location and time specific. For example, holding, folding and placing in iron sword in arms appears exclusively in the southern part of the region, in Borjomi, in the 7th, 6th century BC. The triangular shaped cut into the blade of daggers and spearheads are characteristic for the burial 
uh, burials of Katyn in Shidakatli region along the uh, left side of Kurari during the beginning of the uh, first millennium BC. And although the earliest evidence of U shaped bending is found in the Late Bronze Age, it becomes one of the characteristic features for Iron Age sport in the mountainous region in the 7th century. We see those different, uh, different patterns of this structure may, may reflect certain variation between local communities within the same region that are not necessarily visible in, in material culture. Um, uh, in terms of the little destruction of actors, there can be observed three main contrasts between hordes and burials. First of all, unlike to burials, in hordes they are damaged, uh, they are uh, not only artifacts associated to warrior or warriors, but also those that that is related to agricultural activities and metalwork, such as ingot, as well as personal adornments. Second difference is the pattern of destruction. In burials, one of the prevalent ways of damaging is bending and even folding dagger, sword and spear. This even occurs in hordes. The only exception is the Mosasiati horde, uh, where one of the dagger's point is slightly bent. Uh, in hordes, artifacts are mostly uh, smashed or has no cheese. Often they are also presented in fragments. This later is probably one of the popular pattern of destruction among the hoard material. The thir third difference between the burials and hoard is the uh, geographical awkwardness. On the territory of modern Georgia, burials with intentional destruction of artifacts are mostly localized in Central Asia. As for the burials, uh, this uh, practice equally appears both in Western and Central part of Georgia. Although, the, uh, although, although the, uh, this contrast, it should be supposed the intentional destruction of artifacts as a ritual act in hordes were adapted from burial rites, which, as it is known, had much earlier tradition in South Caucasus region. This very well fits to one of the proposition of the genesis of uh, hordes, based on, on which the concept of artifacts hoarding in the ground, uh, ground was borrowed from, from burials when they started accompanying dead with the bronze object. Uh, this idea was developed by uh, Christiansen. One of the uh, over the time, the meaning and character of intentional destruction uh, in the South Caucasus hordes altered and eventually contrasted to those in burials. If destruction of weapons in burials served to protect from its usage or to accompany the owner after life, the act that had the same uh, results, I mean, uh, destruction of artifacts in hordes. Could, uh, could, uh, could not have had the same meaning. It should be supposed that intentional destructed object in the hordes represented, represented uh, the sacrifice of dietary. Especially it can be said about the non-local objects, such as, for example, socketed eggs in Tomokri hoard or Colchian eggs in the Kalaki hoard. These alien objects were valued more than other ones. And in hordes, in, in the hoard context, they were a uh, subject of special treatment and dedication, dedication to dietary. So, um, uh, so above present, all evidences of deliberate destruction of artifacts contribute to the understanding of the phenomenon uh, phenomena generally in, in, in national world. The, in, the intention of this study is to trigger a discussion on this, uh, on, on the deliberate destruction of artifacts in the, in the bron bronze early Iron Age South Caucasus. Further investigation of artifacts uh, that includes its technical study uh, from, from burials and hoard, not only from page of Georgia, but also from entire South Caucasus and entire Caucasus region, would provide much better understanding of the of ritual practice of ancient population in the South Caucasus. So thank you very much. And yeah. Thank you very much, Georgi. So we will, uh, uh, shall we start with the, with the, with the summary <coughs> in Georgian? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, 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 Romanic Napoleonis can't see the same thing. It's not that he's not just a little bit naive. He's a bit more mystical. 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 He's a bit more 
Didi Madlaba to you, Georgi. Uh, and now, if there are, I would like to involve uh, these numerous uh, public of colleagues and friends. And uh, we start with the answers and questions and questions.